The Humanitarian Development Peace, or Triple Nexus, refers to the interlinkages between humanitarian development and peace actions, particularly in fragile and conflict-affected contexts. It is a concept that came out of the 2016 World Humanitarian Summit and was made a policy priority through the OECD Development Assistance Committee recommendation on the Triple Nexus in 2019. In this recommendation, a Triple Nexus approach is defined as strengthening collaboration, coherence and complementarity among these three pillars, where the goals are to save lives, alleviate suffering, protect the rights and support the dignity of those affected by crises, reduce need, risk and vulnerability, short and long term, and increase resilience. Avoid negative consequences on conflict dynamics and going beyond doing no harm. To contribute to actions that have greater positive impact, including on peace building. Essentially, it means to work towards prevention always, development wherever possible, humanitarian action when necessary. In practice, it could mean the following. Joined up, not always common, analysis and planning, and complementary programming, financing, and evaluation. Leveraging the comparative advantages of each pillar. Adopting a conflict-sensitive lens and approaches. To work towards collective outcomes that are people-centered, needs-based, focusing on leaving no one behind. The choice of how to apply a Nexus approach depends entirely on the context and may not always be necessary or appropriate. This concept and its associated practices are not new. Its predecessors including linking relief, rehabilitation and development, the 3D defense diplomacy and development, or whole of government approaches and initiatives. The conditions that required more integrated, coherent approaches still exist and are more recently exacerbated by the increasing concentration of poverty in fragile states the increasing number of natural disasters made worse by climate change, global health shocks, and the growing number of protracted crises which have increased the humanitarian workload and tested the sustainability and in some cases the effectiveness of interventions. Though there had been long-standing recognition of the need and value of more integrated, coherent approaches at Global Affairs Canada and the Government of Canada more broadly, these are now commitments that we have made through our Feminist Forum Policy, the Feminist International Assistance Policy and Canada's National Action Plan to advance the women, peace and security agenda. In 2019, the Executive Committee of Global Affairs Canada approved a comprehensive work plan to adopt a triple nexus approach in three sequence phases, starting with breaking down silos, then partial integration, working towards full integration. The ambitious work plan includes activities meant to address corporate governance, organizational culture, human resource management, integrated planning and funding processes, as well as capacity building. At its heart, however, it is a way to work more strategically, efficiently and effectively in complex contexts. When I came back to headquarters last year from Nigeria in 2020, I intentionally sought out this position, one that would help me do things better, one that would help me support the department in doing things better, and ultimately to reach our beneficiaries in the most effective way possible. When I was living in Nigeria and working on the program there, I consistently saw gaps where our department could be working more proactively and collectively to be accountable to the populations we serve and where we could have been better addressing underlying inequalities and systemic impediments to the participation, particularly of women, in a better life. I got to see families and individuals and speak with them about what they were really hoping for people affected by crisis whose main question and main concern wasn't around uh, aid or that immediate assistance today, it was how can I support my family to have a better life? And unfortunately, one of the main barriers to that wasn't just the crisis, it wasn't the violence and it wasn't 
what you would expect. It was the silos that we have between programming, not just our programming, but globally, that didn't knit together or connect the pieces that would allow them to explore those opportunities. However, I think the exciting thing about this work is that we have an opportunity to do better. And we have an opportunity to change the standard ways of working so that we're better able to address those issues, the inequalities, the barriers between programming, to connect the dots so that we can be accountable to the populations we serve and support. At the end of the day, if we're going to deliver results, we have to work coherently. When I was running the Middle East Development Program, we were dispersing about 100 million a year, and the humanitarian team was spending almost three times that on the same four countries. But we had 18 people on the ground and they had no one, even though there was a lot of humanitarian coordination taking place in Amman. Under the circumstances, it wouldn't have made an awful lot of sense for the development team to stick to its silo. So we committed a lot of staff time to supporting humanitarian funding, including a full-time position. And we worked up terms of reference so everybody understood what was needed. We consulted on funding proposals. We did some joint planning. We even transitioned some sectors in Jordan from humanitarian to development. And it worked. We got better results that way, which is what it's all about. And no taxpayer and no beneficiary ever care which program did what. They just want to know that Canada is getting the job done. And that's the attitude we need to have too. Le Burkina Faso est malheureusement à l'épicentre de l'insécurité dans le Sahel. Présentement, il y a plus que 1,1 million de déplacés. Il y a des dizaines de milliers d'écoles fermées et des centaines de milliers d'élèves qui ne peuvent plus aller à l'école. Dans un contexte comme celui-ci, c'est incroyablement important d'utiliser l'approche Triple Nexus pour s'assurer que les gains qu'on a eus dans le passé dans l'accès à l'éducation pour les filles et les garçons ne soient pas perdus dans un contexte d'insécurité. C'est vraiment important qu'aucun enfant soit laissé derrière. Quand je suis arrivée au Burkina Faso comme ambassadrice il y a deux ans, j'ai remarqué que le Canada était un peu lent à répondre à cette crise. Et je pense que c'est parce que nous devons porter plus d'attention au Triple Nexus et réagir beaucoup plus rapidement pour s'assurer qu'on a des fonds supplémentaires pour réagir à ce genre de situation et pour se bien se coordonner entre les différentes divisions du département pour pouvoir réagir efficacement. Et je suis vraiment heureuse de dire qu'on a pu faire ça, on a pu augmenter notre financement à l'éducation au Burkina Faso et on a pu financer des programmes innovateurs qui permettent, par exemple, à aider à intégrer des enfants déplacés dans des écoles qui existent déjà. C'est vraiment important pour que le Canada fasse ça, parce que si on veut rester un donateur clé dans ces genres de situations, nous devons absolument faire mieux dans le contexte du Triple Nexus. La crise en RDC, euh, elle est complexe, elle est alimentée par différents acteurs, les groupes armés. Aujourd'hui, la MONUSCO comptabilise plus de 220 groupes armés actifs en RDC. Il y a des groupes de défense locaux, euh, des groupes d'intérêt privé et économique. Et bien sûr, dans ces différents cas, vous avez des soubassements identitaires, fonciers, politiques et autres. Et face à l'incapacité de l'État et de la communauté internationale à travers la MONUSCO, qui est la mission de maintien de paix des Nations Unies, les besoins des populations affectées s'accroissent jour en jour et les limites de l'aide internationale sont de plus en plus visibles. Alors il faut quand même noter que lorsqu'on fait un petit recul en arrière, on constate qu'au fil des années, le manque de coordination des efforts de réponse n'a pas permis de poser les jalons pour une solution sur le long terme. Ce qu'on observe, ce sont des euh, réponses sur le court et le moyen terme, mais une vision globale étalé sur 10-15 ans n'existe pas vraiment. 
During my time in South Sudan, I learned that current and former child soldiers may be reached by a range of streams across the Triple Nexus, from humanitarian assistance, to peace and security programs, to development interventions in schools and hospitals. The lack of coordination at times across these different actors can contribute to a lack of referral or follow-up, and children can fall through the cracks. The unique needs of girls in this space in particular are often overlooked. Only 48% of children associated with armed groups in South Sudan were recruited into combat roles. Girls in particular may become invisible, not being recognized as children in armed conflict by various aid actors, where girls are more likely than boys to be so-called wives, cooks, cleaners, or used in other roles supporting armed groups. As a result, girls are also less likely to be released. There needs to be broad awareness of the particular experience and needs of girls and greater coordination along the triple nexus to ensure comprehensive referral pathways and supports for these children. As a humanitarian donor rep, I consistently work to ensure that Canada's assistance is not politicized and I advocate for the preservation of the humanitarian space. Respecting our partners' neutrality, impartiality, humanity, and independence is about protecting those who deliver assistance where little have access. This can be done by working closely with peace and development actors to achieve better and more sustainable outcomes. To me, the Triple Nexus means working together to provide assistance that is context and conflict sensitive. In light of ever increasing humanitarian caseloads and increasingly protracted crises, it also means leveraging the advantages of humanitarian, peace and development actors to achieve better and collective outcomes when feasible. Humanitarian action can never be the long-term solution to a crisis or conflict. Where our partners are dual or triple-headed, it can mean providing complementary or flexible support. In other cases, it can mean providing niche support to a variety of actors working together on complex issues. Mine Action is a good example. Humanitarian actors can provide victim assistance, stabilization actors mine clearance, and development actors can help build local actors' capacity in fields such as mine risk education. Ultimately, working collaboratively within the Triple Nexus is about providing assistance that is as effective as possible and that is accountable to affected populations. Women and girls living in conflict-affected contexts are the most vulnerable to multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination, particularly sexual violence, which is often used as a tactic of war. A lack of coherence and coordination among the various actors seeking to support women's rights groups in addressing sexual and gender-based violence causes harm to women who often fall between the cracks of the various programs and are unable to access holistic essential services. Often, they find themselves in a position where they have to seek necessary support in different places through different confusing mechanisms, or they just have to live with the gaps created by the lack of integrative approach to humanitarian development and peace actions. It is essential that donors adapt a more integrated approach among humanitarian, development, and peace-building actors and actions to address sexual and gender-based violence. I am a feminist peace builder working with a global network of women peace builders. Our organization works with local women and young people caught between humanitarian crisis and violent conflicts. For example, in Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh, where we train Bangladeshi young women from the host communities on peace building, leadership, economic empowerment, and gender sensitive humanitarian action. We bring all of these components together because this is the only way that they can empower themselves, rise out of poverty, and respond to the Rohingya refugee crisis in ways that also empower Rohingya women and girls. Grassroots women and youth who live in crisis and conflict-affected areas have a profound understanding of their precarious situation, and they have smart solutions on how to get out of it.
In an October 2019 article for the New Humanitarian, Hugo Slim, founder of the Oxford Consortium for Human Rights, speaks about the three truths of the Triple Nexus. Firstly, there is an indivisibility between the purpose and practices of peace, development and humanitarian action. They share certain common objectives around people's protection, health, education, prosperity and peacefulness and they each value order and the rule of law. There is a clear interdependency between the three professions. They each achieve better results if each one of them is able to flourish and their three objectives are usually attained by working in and on the same basic services, the same economy and the same political system. There is also a profound ethical duty to do three good things at once if this is possible and not to limit yourself to one good thing when all three are doable without damaging each other in the process. It's clear that now more than ever, implementing our feminist foreign policy and feminist international po assistance policies are central to achieving Canada's global objectives. We also know that the effective implementation of our guiding policies requires an integrated and coherent approach across humanitarian, development and peacebuilding efforts together. Recent evaluations tell us that a business as usual approach won't get us to where we need to go. Pour mieux répondre aux besoins des communautés, pour atteindre plus efficacement les résultats durables que tout le monde cherche et pour faire progresser l'égalité des gens. Premièrement, nous devons chercher les solutions pour réduire le plus possible tout ce qui nous empêche de travailler d'une façon plus concertée, plus cohérente avec nos systèmes et nos procédures. À cette fin, uh, il y a quelques mois, le ministère a lancé le programme de changement interne pour améliorer notre cohérence entre les engagements humanitaires, développement et de recherche de la paix. While the teams are working creatively to implement these changes, the Nexus teams also need your support. Please get involved. Please support this important work. We've seen some early successes already, such as the development of a Quick Start Nexus reference guide, an awards program to recognize success and new training tools. That said, allons-y ensemble, more work to be done. The most important contribution and factor to change our way of work is you. Many of you in various roles, levels, and locations have already worked in innovative ways to communicate, coordinate, and collaborate in order to address our shared objectives. Par exemple, des employés du ministère ont plaidé en faveur de moyens plus efficaces de coordination à travers nos engagements humanitaires de développement et de recherche de la paix, y compris dans nos programmes d'aide internationale. Les employés de nos missions prennent l'initiative en servant de points focaux pour les piliers de Nexus et les chefs de mission et de programme font preuve de leadership en soutenant des processus Integré et de planification conjointe. De nombreux programmes recherchent une formation et un soutien accru pour s'assurer que le, leurs interventions soient sensibles aux conflits et favorables à la paix. Il ne s'agit là que de quelques exemples de nombreux façons dont notre ministère fait du progrès réel pour renforcer la cohérence. Nous vous encourageons donc à continuer avec ces efforts à saisir toutes les occasions de les faire, à chercher du soutien et des ressources requises si nécessaire, et à nous tenir responsables de notre engagement pour vous soutenir dans vos efforts.